Hello once again class and welcome to another mock lecture. Today we are tackling the difference quotient, which is actually kind of the foundations of calculus. Now we're not going to do any calculus today, but uh, it is cool to know that this is actually, if, if you take 251 in the future, and this is basically where you're going to start, is revisiting this thing called the difference quotient. Now, we, we just finished talking about how we can find an average rate of change for a nonlinear function by essentially drawing a line between the two points we want to find an average rate of change between. Um, so in this example, let's say we want to find the average rate of change on the interval 3 to 6. Um, of course, we can see where the points are. We know 3, 1 is the first point and 6, 3 is the second point. So we go ahead and we plug all this stuff into the slope formula and we get 2 thirds. Okay. Today, though, we're going to ask a new question, and it's, what if we're not given an interval? Can we find an average rate of change of a function on an unspecified interval? Right? Can we find average rate of change on an unspecified interval? Um, of course, like most things in math, when you ask a question that's seemingly complex, the answer turns out to be yes. Right? We can do that. And the way that we're going to do that is still utilizing the slope formula, but we need to come up with a slope formula that is generalized. So we don't know like y2 and y1, and we don't know anything. There's no interval for which we're working on. So we're going to define an unspecified interval. The unspecified interval we're going to look at is x to x plus h. Those are going to be like our x1, x2 values. So that's the unspecified interval. And, and the reason why we're choosing x and x plus h is because it gives us the distance between these two values, right? The, the run, if you will, the horizontal distance between these two values is a single variable. It's just h. h is the horizontal distance of this average rate of change on this unspecified interval. Okay. Uh, now, we're, we're still going to need some y values, right? We need a numerator for the slope formula, right? And if we're going to call this function f, I don't actually know if I wrote it, so I'll write it in now. Let's say that this function is called f. Um, what is the corresponding y value for x, right? What's the corresponding y value for x plus h? Remember, think general. Think unspecified. So the y value for x is very simply f of x. The y value for x plus h is f of x plus h. You're just plugging those values into the function f to get the corresponding y values. Uh, okay, let's find the slope between these two points, right? Let's find the average rate of change between the point x and f of x and the point x plus h, f of x plus h, right? Average rate of change is the, is the slope of the line that goes between those two points. So we're just going to use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, let's start with the denominator because we already talked about how we made x plus h and x, um, the x2 and x1 coordinates respectively so that the x's could cancel and it would just give us h, right, which is nice. Um, the y coordinate, uh, the y2 is f of x plus h, right? this thing here that's y2 minus y1 is just f of x and that is it that thing is the average rate of change on the interval x to x plus h and that thing is called the difference quotient okay so here it is and if you want to take this down in your notes that'd be a great place to put it the difference quotient the average rate of change of a continuous function on the interval the closed interval x to x plus h where h is not equal to zero. Okay, otherwise the denominator would be zero and this whole thing would be undefined, given by f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. If you want to define a derivative, right, the first calculus concept, which is instantaneous rate of change, all you do is you stick a limit right in front of this thing and that is, that's it. That's the calculus definition of a derivative. Again, we're not going to do that today. But it's, it's hard for me not to just throw that in because I think it's so cool. You're effectively decreasing the distance, right? This number is approaching this number. The distances are getting super small until it's right on top of itself. And that is instantaneous rate of change, which is the slope of the tangent line. Anyway, I am digressing massively. Example one, find the difference quotient for 
k of x is equal to x squared minus 2x, which is to say find the generalized formula for average rate of change, right? That's what the difference quotient is. It's the generalized formula for average rate of change. Okay, so we got to use this thing. f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Probably the first thing we should do is realize we're not using f, we're using k. So really this should say k of x plus h minus k of x all divided by h, but you know, whatever. k of x plus h is something we actually need to find. We need to evaluate uh, k at x plus h, which is to say we're plugging in x plus h for that x and we're plugging in x plus h for that x. That's how you evaluate k of x plus h. So it looks a little com complicated, right? You've got x plus h quantity squared minus 2 times x plus h, which means we're going to need to distribute this negative sign here, right? Uh, this, this negative 2, rather, gets distributed to the x and to the h. This is squaring a binomial, which is a binomial times itself. So whether you want to do first, outer, inner, last, if you want to do FOIL, or if you want to do the box method, which is my personal favorite, uh, you get this, right? x squared plus 2xh plus h squared, and then you still got the minus 2x minus 2h. Okay, so if we specify this thing for k of x, we can now substitute k of x plus h with this thing. Right, the thing that we just found, which looks like this. k of x, we actually already know. It's right here. k of x is here. So let's replace k of x with x squared minus 2x, which is what it is. And we get something that looks absolutely insane. Right? This looks terrifying, but it's going to simplify. Right? And that's our next goal. So first, I'm going to go ahead and distribute the negative sign to the x squared minus 2h, which turns it into minus x squared plus 2x. Um, I think I said H, but I meant X. And at this point, a whole bunch of stuff is going to cancel. Here is an X squared. Here is a minus X squared. Those are gone. Here is a uh, negative 2X and a positive 2X. So those are also gone. So the only thing that's left in the numerator is 2XH plus H squared minus 2H, which is really good because that means that everything in the numerator and the denominator all have an h in common. So we could effectively reduce this fraction by a factor of h, which gets rid of the h here. It gets rid of the, there's really an h times an h, so it gets rid of one of the h's here. So I'm gonna get rid of the square piece. It gets rid of the h here, and of course the denominator reduces to one. So you actually just get 2x plus h minus two. And that's how you know you're doing the difference quotient correctly. Everything with an h in it, uh, is what's going to be left in the numerator. So it'll cancel, it'll reduce, and you're just going to get something that uh, is not a fraction anymore. So 2x plus h minus 2. Okay, now you might be wondering, and I think that it's a good idea to, to always think about what, what the heck did we just do? What is this thing? Right? What is 2x plus h minus 2? It's the average rate of change on an unspecified interval. Right? 2x minus 2 plus h, and I, I put it in a different order here because I like to put the h at the end, is the average slope on x to x plus h. That's what it is. So what, what is the point of knowing this, right? I mean, this doesn't really help us unless we know x and h, but that's exactly the reason why this is useful. Let's say what we wanted to do is find the average rate of change for like a bunch of intervals. I put three here. But let's say we had like 50, 50 different intervals where we wanted to look at the average rate of change. Um, you know, and maybe I could have picked even a better example. I could have gone from 0 to 2 and then 0 to 3 and then 0 to 4 and then 0 to 5. And we could have seen how is the average rate of change changing, right? That itself could be another function we could define. Um, I didn't do that. So let's just pretend we have a bunch of arbitrary intervals. But they're defined. We've got a whole bunch of them. So if you look at this, you're like, okay, oh man, I got to do the slope formula a whole bunch of times. Let's see, we know x1 and x2. Oh my gosh. Okay, so to find y2 and y1, we got to plug those values into this thing. Okay, no, right? We don't have to do that. We already know that. We already know y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 in general. We know the difference quotient, which is the generalized version of this. So all we need to know then is what is x and what is h, and we can know that 
because of the intervals that are given, and then we just plug them into this formula here. So, okay, in the first one, x is 0, h is 2. So we have 2 times 0 minus 2 plus 2 because h is 2. So that's 0, negative 2 plus 2, that's 0. So 0 is the average rate of change on 0 to 2. No need to do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 because we already did it. That's what the difference quotient is. Next one, x is equal to 1, h is equal to not 3, which you may be tempted to say. h is the distance between this lower bound and upper bound of the interval. The distance between these two things is 2, right? It's 1 plus 2. That's how we're getting 3. So then h is 2 again. So 2 times 1 minus 2 plus 2. Those just cancel again, so we just get 2, right? And the next one, x is 2. h is 8 because the distance between 2 and 10 is 8. So again, we run it through the formula. We get 10. So we're able to find these average rates of change on, on intervals really quickly because we calculated the slope in general, and that is the usefulness of the difference quotient. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful. Um, if you guys have any questions, please shoot me an email or use Piazza. Thanks a ton for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.